Super Super Sport wet paint. Big feet. I pull up and kill shit. Six feet. All right, six feet going deep. It's Victoria's with. This is Deji. This is Eddie, and we're Paper Water. All right, guys. Um, why don't you tell us about what you do? Um. Well, I guess I'll start off. Uh, we're a uh, live electronic do-it-yourself hip-hop based production duo and we also curate our own events so i heard that you didn't like the electronic title well i don't like the edm title because what's I, the difference between electronic and edm uh, electronic i want to say is like what you found on yeezus um, and edm is what you kind of find with a guy with a marshmallow head and you know it's like it's a whole different uh I mean, I could see why you like the EDM party stuff, and I could see there's like a time and place for it, but I don't think there's like. I, I don't think we are. Either. Yeah, I don't think that represents like my upbringing or like all my musical influences at all. So, yeah. Did, um, did you guys want to go to like festivals or anything like that? Oh, our first time going to festivals was playing them this year. Really? Yeah. Three points. Three points. Um. EDC and Middlelands, which is by Insomniac, they also do EDC, and that was like our first experience going to a festival and like playing, which was crazy. But isn't it good to be in that like category because then you do get booked for the things like that? Because pretty sure like if you're a rapper, they're not really gonna book you for like things like that. You know? Yeah, it's a. I want to say it's like a good, it's a good loophole to be relevant in every single category. Yeah. Well, hip hop has been my first love. That was like my first love. It was the first thing I was ever been introduced to. It was like my brothers playing hip hop music. Even from like all the samples my mom used to play on Sunday morning, it's the only thing I know. It's like like Marvin Gaye, the Isley Brothers. Yeah, old. Yeah. So when I would hear him again as a little kid, I'd be like, I know what this is, and I immediately connected to it. And like growing up, I was like, I know where this sample's from, and like that's what I got into production for. Cause like I just knew everything. Yeah, same. And also, as far as like electronic, um, I could say we're both influenced by like Justice, um, a lot of other, um, Daft Punk. yeah, Daft Punk, uh, James Blake. You guys ever thought of wearing helmets to like mask or anything? No, I feel like Daft Punk. They're they're the goat. You can't top that. Okay. <laughs> Um, not really. I don't know. I think it's like, uh, I think we're unique as is if, like in any category, if you just were to see us on stage, it's kind of like, you've yeah. never seen anything that looks what, like us before. Like? Um, it's, it's live elements mixed with like hip hop and electronic music. So a lot of remixes, a lot of, uh, piano playing by Deji. He plays well, on... Yeah, you guys we're going around we have like this booth that was built by our creative director Juan so since so we build our own booth and there's like pieces of equipment on the edge of the booth and like on the middle so we're constantly moving around and like swapping it. places and like paying and sequencing different parts of our set and yeah. it's interactive with the crowd it's interactive with the crowd and uh it's, it's just fun what were um, some of your early shows like, like your first one? our earlier shows where it was basically it was like a DJ set, and it's very like a like a dance party. So it would be a show, but you'll feel like you're like at a house party listening to like yeah. dope house and like hip hop music, like underground. It still has like an underground feel to it, but now that we're doing bigger stages and festivals, it's like that, but on a bigger platform. Yeah. That's dope. yeah. So uh, do you guys ever get nervous? Like I, I get nervous because I want to say like I guess every artist get nervous because you want everybody to like you and receive your art and what you're trying to put out there as like as as good or let me uh, let me think about how to say this um yeah it's like with my intentions being like real pure I want people to receive that and like be like oh I see where he's coming from I know what he's trying to make me do yeah. and he's trying to make me feel happy sad dance you know like and I guess that's I guess that's like basically yeah
Yeah, I think we're nervous before, but we like practice and. Yeah, we rehearse and, you know, we're, we're like, we think about like how we want people to feel at certain parts of the show. Or even if we're, we do this with just like regular DJ set parties too. But once we get on, like once we're performing, I think it goes away. Yeah, it's like something, something turns on. Yeah. Yeah, it just turns on and we just feel ready. It's like, okay, let's go. Yeah. So, um, what, um, what's the difference like? Did you um, decide to become DJs, or is that, did you just, like, fall into it? Um, we kind of fell into it by, like, an opportunity that a friend, he used to be a promoter on the beach, and he was kind of like, hey, I know you guys are, like, producers. There's this new thing happening where producers are DJing, and you, I think you guys would be, like, awesome DJs because you guys are, are, like, good producers. So we kind of went to this gig, and funny thing was we were, like, really unprepared we only came with 10 songs and it was like an hour long set so we thought we literally thought you could play 10 songs like yeah. how you would yeah and it would equal yeah so uh so to make a long story short we kind of just like backed out and told them we weren't prepared i think i said something like my hard drive broke and we kind of just left and then we went back the next day and i was like we got to practice and i woke up every day uh, at five in the morning for I want to say like six months straight and just practice like maybe a couple hours until like I started my mornings and then that's how I eventually like we, we would go to we would go to a guitar center because we didn't have like no DJ equipment or money to like buy it so we'll just go on guitar center and practice that's when we were doing CDJs. Too. Yeah, we're yeah we're switching to CDJs. I won't lie. Sometimes, well, like, every single time I go to Guitar Center, I always go to the DJ. Like when I'm waiting for them to help me and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I always go to the DJ, um, the DJ area, and I always like play with it and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, cool. they would ask us. They're like, "Oh, when's your next gig? We want to see it. You've been practicing." So. Yeah. yeah, they knew they knew us by name by that point. Yeah. Then, yeah. Um, how did you guys feel like when um, they started picking up? That you started seeing. Like, it it kind of went from we would go around to every venue and like tell them why they should let us play because we felt like we were doing something different and then people started to call us and kind of be like hey we want you back and then they started to call our manager Aaron and like it kind of just was it because you were going to them or is it because of how the crowd was reacting it it just I get. I guess we get this a lot. It's like we make people feel happy. Like how you're supposed to feel at a party. You're supposed to be like happy, and like yeah. the owners picked up on like the staff being happy to be at work. And well, like, how do you do that with music that's like down tempo? Um, we kind of play everything. So we go from down tempo. There's down tempo music that makes you feel good, especially when you know you've been drinking a couple of drinks. When you've been like, there's slow dances. You know that make you look like at a girl a certain way, yeah. and then you kind of build up a like. A roller coaster so you want to build it up from slow to fast and then bring them back down and kind of control them and then you can kind of just see everybody's face like connecting with you every song you pick get hype. I think the cool thing about us because we have a hip-hop background and we're still like we're open to like new hip-hop too is like we could especially like Eddie he could like place Tame Impala and then go into Playboy Cardi like right away and it'll be like seamless and people like oh until like a remix that we did so people are like oh this is very like unique to now so, uh, what do you guys listen to? Um, like, just like how you said, yeah, uh, I listen to a lot of indie music. I listen to a lot of hip hop. I listen to a lot of electronic music. But to name a few, probably like he said, like I listen to a lot of Justice, a lot of Tame Impala, a lot of uh, Playboy Cardi, a lot of ASAP, a lot of Toro. Everything Kanye. Though. Everything Kanye. Um, big Kanye stand, Jay Z. Uh, uh, graduation and use us. My favorite is my beautiful dark twisted fantasies. <laughs> that's so I see it's like I that's my favorite. I just heard um, 808 and Heartbreak. I never heard the album before. What? 808 and Heartbreak's the it's most game changing yeah, album. It's the reason why people like probably seeing Drake's auto tune. Yeah. 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 Oh well, T Pain. T Pain was good, but like I think that. 808 influence like you know you got your Drake your Cuddy and everything to like a lot of people came out after that that's true um wait you were saying about uh uh, my beautiful dark a masterpiece 
it was like the album he created after like he got banished from the u.s after he did the taylor swift thing and he went missing for a little bit i feel like production wise it's like next level very ambitious the collaborations i think it was like 40 plus people i don't know that was like on the album well, um, i was saying about um about Yeezus, like because a lot of people didn't really like the album but i see how like, you would like it because it's like kind of like how your style yeah like, yeah it's Th that was changing too. we took a trip to like uh europe this past year and like we went to berlin we went to all the underground clubs you can like go to to see like where he got his inspiration from and like it, you kind of understand it at, the, at a certain point it's very rough but it like i think it captures like the underground electronic scene like perfect and it's kanye and like what do you think of the underground electronic scene like how did how is it through your eyes i think it's like it's awesome i think i would love to see hip-hop and the underground electronic scene combined kind of like something how you see in the uk they have grime music yeah. and like those guys are now starting to collab you see like skepta with asap and all these people it's starting to bridge the gap drake's over there a lot more and i think i think every rapper can benefit from just like diverse like diversifying their Fair beat style. selection yeah and like getting a lot more electronic production I feel, I feel like they show um then you're up yeah i would say they're very open to new things yeah i think yes because i think you get a lot more love in europe because there's well also la is like that too because we played in la that people go out wanting to hear new music versus like a lot of cities in the u.s they just want to hear what they hear on the radio I feel like it's like that in Miami. yeah but i think it's changing though slowly like there's more do it yourself like groups and people and artists that are putting on their own events and drawing their own crowds so i'm optimistic about miami do you guys go to a lot of the underground shows on here too sometimes like we we're in a studio a bunch so like we're when we're not in a studio we're probably planning like new events or new creative like like avenues but um yeah, we do. We check out a few underground events. I just realized that it's a little dark. Oh, yeah, I got it. It yeah. was like right at the beginning of the, <laughs> the ending, but then I got a little like, Yeah. But, that eye saw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just brighten up that part. <laughs> right here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, when it comes to like the music, right, what, um, what like, programs do you use like your dogs? I'm mainly based off of Ableton and Deji uses Logic and Ableton and we kind of just like send each other stems and then that's how we kind of work. Do you think it matters which doll you use? I don't think so. I think it's the final product. And It doesn't matter. You could use iPhone app and if you could bounce it out and it's dope, it's just dope. But parts of it, not a whole song, but I've taken something I did on like GarageBand on the iPhone and then put it like in the laptop and finished it. Hey, for real. <laughs> you know Steve Lacey uses his iPhone to do that. Yeah. 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 yeah, he records it, he plugs his uh, bass guitar right into the iPhone. Uh, I usually um, record these interviews with my phone because it's right outside. I, I, I didn't know it was Yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. <laughs> they, uh, we did an interview recently and they did the same thing and I was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, iPhone, the iPhone is not really that bad. You know? No, it's powerful. It's a, like a powerful little computer. Yeah. Especially if you know how to engineer, like you already have like, as long as you're in a good, like, recording spot, you, know, yeah. you should be good. Yeah. But I got a lot of backlash for these five. Oh, no, my no. people didn't think it was professional or enough? Yeah, because, I mean, you can hear everything you're saying, but they're like, oh, why is he using an iPhone? So it's just like, they yeah. see the iPhone, they're like, oh, this is unprofessional, so it's trash. Yeah. It's like, I mean, Party Next Door did his uh, first hit uh, um, on, like, Beats, like, headphones. He recorded into, like, oh, some yeah. Beats headphones. Yeah. You guys like Party Next Door a lot? I, I like his music. Yeah. But, but I'm not like a, I'm not like a super fan of Party Next Door, but like I like Party Next he's Door. He's a he, he's an amazing songwriter. Like I yeah, think he's like, like, is like a songwriter. He's, he's really good. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, who's like an artist that you guys would like spaz out if you like met them? Um, Kanye is like my first answer. It's like yeah, I was just losing my shit. It's like cliche, but Pharrell. Pharrell. But I'm not ashamed of it. It's just like. They're both, they're both, they're both. Yeah. yeah. What about some? Um, 
them. Wait, that we would like spaz or? No, like who, who are some artists that you work with? Right. D- damn. How far back do you want to go? As of now, I think now we're doing like outreach to like work. We haven't really actually worked with like a lot of artists, but I think this year is like not, the year. Not this project as Paper Water. Individually, yeah. we work with like artists. He used to yeah. be. Yeah, I used to be a part part of like of a band called After the Smoke, but. Were you, you were making like metal or like. It was like hip hop. It was like. Hip hop, yeah. Yeah, it was like an eerie, like eerie, mellow hip hop before it got. Kind of like Outkast if they were a man. Okay. Yeah. That's eerie. No, no, but it was like more. It was like a dark Outkast, like a goth. Out. It it, it would have fit in perfectly with what's going on now, uh, like how like Travis Scott is like and Metro Booming, like their sounds sort of has like a Halloween like yeah. dark yeah. feel to it. Uh, so. So you're on that like before everyone else. Yeah. But this year, I think it's the year that we're gonna really uh, open up and collaborate with more artists. Like around. If anybody's open and collabing, hit us up. We have beats. We're actually releasing a a beat tape. I want to say in February, along with our EP. So yep. open to anybody hopping on our beats. Yeah. Down to collab. So do you only make beats, or do you also like sing and rap and stuff? Uh, we sing and we don't really rap. We prefer to let like really good rappers rap. Like, I, I respect the art too much to be like, yeah, yeah, to dabble in it. So, like, no, but we sing, though. Yeah, exactly. Um, what is a, what's a way that you guys made a lot of money? Through, through like, uh, events. Um, like, just performing is, like, the most we made. And then also, um, like, creatively, like, creating content. So, me and Eddie own, like, Half Full Creative with our two partners. Aaron and Juan and so we do we like create content for like companies and events and other artists uh, so, um, like videos like, uh, like coordinating their, their creative team pretty much or something like that oh well, it's kind of just like if you need us to film an event we can go and film an event we could take photos we could edit your website we could design your flyer and we're kind of like a do it uh, yourself like shop yeah. where we can go to an event and like run the door, like book the DJ lineups, kind of like uh, coordinate like the whole entire night, and then give it to you with like in a in a with a bow on it, and then that's. You guys, all, you guys went to school for that, or you just learned how to do it all yourself? Uh, trial and error. Yeah. Yeah. Just failing a lot of times. We took a lot of L's, uh, and like you eventually learn. Yeah, we don't want to like completely depend on other people booking us, and if you could like do it yourself and put together your own event you have control over it creatively and that's like what we care about is like our creative freedom yeah yeah what's like uh what's a big l that you guys think man Uh, so many man let me let me give me one second this is the part where you like chop it out and then i come up with an apple um well our i want to say our first big l or first big L this year was that we went to LA to do a show it was like our debut LA show and our live set equipment didn't work so we ended up just doing like a DJ set and then it was kind of just like a wasted trip because we just like yeah you guys have a writer? yeah we yeah. have a writer that Aaron takes care of yeah. no we just weren't big enough I guess <laughs> <laughs> Not, my clout is the cloud isn't big enough so uh, call tokens? Yeah. Call oh, tokens. Like, oh, clout tokens? Right. Oh. Probably my, like 12. Yeah. Uh, out of 100. Like no, my one. thing's at 99 right now. 99. But I'm like, I'm like Sonic. If I run into anything, I lose all those coins. Like, and Clout yeah. coins. It's I like, take another L, that's it. You start back from zero. No, we yeah. take L's every other, every other day. Everybody takes L's, better. yeah. It's like, you get the most important lessons from taking L's. Unless you're like, it's a major L and you guys take fall off. Yeah. Yeah. But if you learn from your L's, you can't. You don't fall off. Uh, of course. What yeah. about some goals in the future for the future you guys have? Um. So. Our goal. Our goal in the future is to drop like a EP and an album this year in 2018, and tour off of it. What is the album called? To be announced. 
That's not the name of the album. Or right, that might be a good name, actually. When did you guys song, Name Your Group, Paper Water? Uh, we were drunk one night in front of Taco Bell, and we were like, hey, we need like a name for a group, because we need to like put a name to what we're doing, because we're going by our individual names. And uh, I think... I was like, you could call yourself anything. Like, everybody has crazy names now. So I was like, you could call yourself Cookie Chris, Taco Bell, and Paper Water. And then he was like, uh, Deji looked at me and he was like, Paper Water. And he was like, that, I was like, that sounds pretty good. And then that was it. And I just got yeah. obsessed with it, I guess. I got obsessed with it and started uh, drawing logos. And yeah, because I, I like it because it like, rolls off the tongue. Like, yeah. Um, my friend had told me about you guys when I asked me about like, oh, yeah. We, we like coming up with random one word or like two syllable names. Yeah. That yeah. sound for for as like a hobby. Yeah, like our record label is called Wet Paper. <laughs> our creative company is called Half Full, and it kind of like ties into like the whole yeah. water. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So. Um, just don't listen to anybody. Keep a tight knit team because that's like probably the most important thing. Yeah. And just keep pushing and like work hard every day because if you do work hard, like people eventually do come calling. And if people aren't calling, suck it up and work harder. And like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll just say just have the blinders on and just don't stop and then analyze every once in a while and then put the blinders back on. Because you don't know really what's going to happen, so you just have to have learn on the way. Yeah. 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 Of course. What about um, anyone who has one shout-out? Or is there anything like this? Everyone want a shout-out? Yeah. Uh, our entire team, Half Full Creative, Coffin Tags, uh, our artists, uh, Wala Snow, Yana, Juan, Aaron, everyone in Miami, all the artists in Miami doing it right now. Um, shout out to our Spotify. You guys should check that out. Yeah. Shout out to all the rappers, singers, anybody that just wants to work in 2018. Hit us up. And shout out Six Feet. And shout out Six Feet for having us yeah. do this interview. Thank you very much. And um, we're gonna find you guys out. You could find us out. You could find us everywhere, every platform. Paper water. One word. One word. Paper. One word. Paper water. My individual Instagram's Deji Kuya. That's D A Y G E E K W I A. Good luck finding that. And I'm Eddie and the Eggplants. That's Eddie and A N D the Eggplants. Uh, all right, so it's been six feet with Paper Water.